Today we'll do the fuel air mixture in this 1969 Corvette with a 350 engine and a Rochester carburetor. Let's get started. One of the first thing we'll do is go ahead and remove the air cleaner. And this will allow us easy access to the carburetor. Now the idler mixer screws on the Rochester, we actually have two of them on this carburetor. One is located right here and one is on the other side, right there. Before starting, ensure that your engine is already warm and has been running for a little bit at normal operating temperature. To adjust the idler screws, you'll need this special tool which allows you to get into the idler screw and make the turns. You also need a vacuum gauge. Now when we start to use the vacuum gauge, one of the key things that we'll look at is how the vacuum goes in right here by looking at the gauge. We'll watch it to peak out and then we'll back it off. So we'll watch it to peak off, out and then back it off. That is the perfect point of fuel and air mixture. Right at that point to where it starts to peak out and then drop off. Now what I'll do is go ahead and hook up the gauge, which is right here on my carburetor. And I'll pull this plug right here, slide the vacuum gauge in, just like that. And once I start it, I'll watch the gauge as it moves. And once it gets to the peak movement, uh, and then starts to drop, that is the perfect spot for the fuel-air mixture. Now keep in mind, I'll have to do both sides of this carburetor. So on the Rochester carburetor, I have a valve on this side, an idler valve or idle needle on this side, and one on the other side. So I'll in turn have to do both of them. If I had a Harley, uh, Harley four barrel, and in many cases those, those have two in the front and two in the rear. So you'll have to do four of them. And then once you do them, then you adjust the speed, your idle speed right here with your, your uh, screw right here for the RPMs. Now for the 350, it's about 750 RPMs. Now this special tool I simply got at the O'Reilly store. They have them at AutoZone in O'Reilly. And many of these idler, uh, idle screws, you, uh, some of them are Phillips uh, screwdrivers, some are just a flat tip, and some require this special tool. And it simply just goes in just like this, onto the needle and you simply turn it. Now keep in mind, think of safety when operating around cars. You have the belts right here and you don't want to get too close to those. Uh, keep in mind and uh, think about the heat from the engine too while operating around the engine. So we'll go ahead and start the engine up, do some adjustments. I'll try to show you the, uh, the gauge as we're doing it and off we go. Now as all I'm doing is, as this needle goes over here, and it starts to max out, then I adjust it uh, to right at the point where it maxes out. As I back off on this and it starts to reduce again, then that's the sweet spot. Right at the point to where it can no longer go any farther and if I turn it, then it goes lower. That's the sweet spot. And I do both sides. I go back and forth until I get it perfect on both sides. show you what this gauge really looks like. You watch this needle, and as this needle peaks out, it starts to adjust back, and at that point is the sweet spot. This needle right here. As it peaks out more toward 20, it starts to go back. Right at the point where it starts to go back is the sweet spot.
Now, once complete, simply just pull the gauges out and the special tool and go ahead and make sure that your RPMs is adjusted to 750 RPMs on the 350 engine. It may differ for a car. Now that I have the needle idler adjusted, I'll go ahead and make sure that the RPMs is adjusted to 750 RPMs. And that's simple enough right here. Well, there you go. RPMs is adjusted at 750 RPMs. A perfect fuel and air mixture using the needle idler valve. And we'll go ahead and put it all back together. Another mission accomplished. Let's go ahead and start it up and see what it sounds like.